Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Bryce, and this is a comprehensive and easy to understand tutorial on plane bending. The difference between anti bend and iso bend. And we're not going to talk about pro bend in this. That just throws a really technical wrench into things that you don't need to be paying attention to when you just start bending. The most important thing is to be able to cleanly and consistently <clears throat> draw plane bend shapes because. Like a couple other things in Poi, if your shapes aren't clean and plain bending, they barely existed. No one will remember or care that you did it. So, um, the first thing to note is that as opposed to drawing with your base being a circle, which is flat, you're drawing with your base being a torus. Actually, mini toruses that make up an enormous sphere. But for now, you just need to see yourself as standing in a single torus, one donut around you. And that donut is going to go over you that way. And then below you, this way. What I'm doing right now is called an iso bend flower. Iso bend multi-lobe flower. I'm not giving it a, a determined number of lobes right now, but every little coil or lobe that I draw is a petal. It's uh, the same basically as a petal, but in plain bend territory. The reason this is iso bend is because it's always going in the same direction, whether it's coming, it's, it's, it's always coming in. Because I started coming in, it's coming in every time. And to how you can tell the difference between whether you're going in or out, this was a problem I had when I first started, is that you're always, if it's going in, it's going toward the center, which means it would hit your, if you brought it in, it would hit your chest. That means that it's going in. But if it's spinning outward, it would hit your back if you brought it in. And this is the same for every different location. Up here, if I was spinning out, it would hit my back. If I'm spinning in, it would hit my chest. And over here, it's easy to tell because if I'm spinning in, I'm going to hit my shoulder. You see? This central region is the center. So if I'm going in, I'm going in toward the center. That's the center. In there and in here. So the big differentiating factor between isobend and antibend is that antibend changes whether it's going in or out at every different cardinal location or polar location. So at zero degrees, at 90 degrees, at 180 degrees, and at 360 degrees, it's changing. Oh, there's another one I skipped. Zero, 90, 180, one, the other one, 180 plus 90, and 360. <laughs> at all of those different places, it's gonna be changing whether it's going in toward the center or out away from the center. <clears throat> so this is an iso bend four pedal. <coughs> it's going in here, it's going in here, it's going in here, it's going in here. And then, uh, that was an anti bend, excuse me. And then here. I have to say, whenever you're drawing these shapes and you're trying to learn them, it's actually a little bit better to try to do them faster, if you can, because the shape innately is not one that has stops. It doesn't. It's bent. It's constantly... It's, it's a shape that requires you to keep moving for you to actually be drawing the shape. At any moment that you stop and drawing a shape, you're now just at a static spin at whatever plane that you fell on. And that's not the same as what you're trying to do. So, that is what an, uh, a four-pedal iso bend looks like. I'll show it to you again from different directions. So here it's coming in, but it's still coming in. Always mess this one up. Still coming in. Coming in. 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 That direction, I don't even know why I'm, I never do that direction. 
Anyways, as in I never go... Okay, I should probably say. Isobin and antibin can both happen in different directions. As I said, isobin, it's not just that you're always going in. It's that you're either going in at every rotation or you're going out at every rotation. Both of those are isobin. Antibin has two different variations because you can have your the place where you go in being at the top and at the bottom, or you can have the place where you go in being at the right or the left, and the place that you go out being at the other ones. Um, so, I should probably give you a, oh yeah, I'm going to just show you from the different side. Now it's going out. You know, that bend that I did there, now it's going out. So, um, this is what uh, an anti-bend four pedal looks like. Um, it's a little, in my opinion, less tricky because it's a lot more seamless. That everything connects at a place. So you don't have to go back to square one, if you will, to finish drawing that shape. Um, whereas you do have to with isobend. You have to go back to where you're going out from. Um, so when, with anti-bend, flowers and four petals are going to look like this. Do you understand what I mean by it feels a lot more seamless? It doesn't have those like extra things that you have to give it. Like even even just doing a cap. I read, I bent out on that one. But um, even just doing a cap is uh, it's just a little po more pointed in ways. It doesn't have that like fluid, consistent movement about it. Well, with anti-bend, I'm a firm advocate of anti-bend, I should say. Um, yeah, like I was saying, the, the difference is going to be that here I'm, I'm coming towards my back. Right? Actually, I don't like to do that. So the top pedal is going towards my chest. And then this one is going out. Right? And then this one is coming in. And then that one's going out. Out. And then this one's coming in. Towards my chest. And that one's going out. This one's coming in toward my chest. And that one's going out away from my chest. I'll show you that again on the, from the side. This is coming in. This one's going out. It's a little hard to see that side of the side. I'll do it this way. So, this one's coming in. This one's going out. Out, 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 out. This one's coming in. And then this one's going out. This one comes in, this one goes out. So I'll do it from this side because there's a, there's a couple pedals that's a little trickier to see. Um, this is going in, this is going out, this is going in, in, this is going out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out. That would be, that would be something. But yeah, um, it's going to take a while to wrap your mind around getting the shapes super clean and not um, having to think every time you draw them. But um, the more you do them, the easier and more seamless it becomes for your hands. It doesn't feel as... This is the um, isobin I prefer to do, the one that goes outward. And you'll probably find one that you prefer just because left and right differences in your brain. One of them is going to make a lot more natural sense than the other ones. One of them is going to make a lot more natural sense than the other ones. And one of them, anti and iso -bend, is going to make more natural sense than the other ones. I encourage you to play with whichever one makes more sense and find ways of incorporating it. Because when you do that, <coughs> you end up <coughs> really grinding out the shape. <coughs> which makes it a lot easier for you to use the, the abilities that the shape gives you. Um, 
so yeah, just um, if you, I guess if you have any more questions, if I didn't clear really anything up for you, that, or if there's something that I could have cleared up for you a little more, and you have a direct question, please feel free to send me a message. Please feel free to inquire. I want really uh, greatly for people to understand this technique so that we can apply it more to our art. Um, yeah, thanks guys. I hope you, hope you dug it.